This is a holy place How can I be here? How can I show my face? For what do I deserve? No more than judgment and disgrace How can I enter your presence lightly Forgetting all you've done Forgetting all you've done Let me remember your sacrifice And the price at which this freedom is won How deep I wounded, how shallow my regret And though I don't deserve Your blood has cancelled out my death I will not enter your presence lightly Forgetting all you've done Forgetting all you've done Lord, I remember your sacrifice And the price at which this freedom is Come sanctify me and break this heart of sin And let my life become A place that Christ might enter in. I will not enter your presence lightly Forgetting all you've done Great Father, Spirit, Son I will remember your sacrifice And the love with which my freedom is won I will not enter your presence lightly Forgetting all you've done Great Father, Spirit, Son I will remember your sacrifice and the love with which my freedom is won and the love with which my freedom Hello and welcome to worship on this Sunday the 17th of January. It's lovely to welcome you into this time and into this space. We're doing things a little bit differently today. It's not just the, the regular church family of Bonnie's Old Kirk who's here with us this morning, but rather we are worshipping together with our friends and our neighbours 
in the congregations of Caradon Parish Church and Bones St Andrews. And so it's a delight and a privilege and a pleasure to be able to share together in our worship this morning. And so let's come. Whether we come every week or whether we come for the first time, let's come. Whether we are weary and worn and sad or whether we are jumping for joy and full of celebration, come. Come and see. Come and see that God is good. Come and see that God is good and see what is there for you. Let's pray. Father God, we come into this space and we come into this time curious, wondering, anticipating, but also, God, because you call us. You know our name and you whisper it in our ear in the way that only you can. And because we hear, we respond and we come. Open our eyes that we might see, open our ears that we might hear, and open our hearts that when we see you and hear you, we might sense your love and be transformed. Lord, we come into this time and into this space, the space into which you call us, a throne room of your grace and your mercy. For you, Lord, the King of the universe, the, the maker and sustainer of life, you bid us to come with arms open wide. Perhaps, Lord, as we come, something stirs within us and we sense that we're not worthy to be enveloped by your embrace. Our shoulders sink, our chins droop, and in shame we hide ourselves. And yet, Lord, still you bid us to come. To come and confess the things that we've done, which have hurt others, have hurt you, or have harmed ourselves. You bid us to come and to share with you the ways in which we've disappointed you or feel that we've let you down. For the times when we've gone with our will instead of yours. For the times when we've put ourselves first instead of others. For the times when we've, we've withheld words of encouragement or words of love. Lord, these we offer to you now in the silence in our hearts. And Lord, as we offer them to you, may we sense the burden of them lift within us. May we know the, the freedom from them. May we hear the chains within us breaking as your forgiveness, your grace and your mercy seep into us, into the nooks and crannies of our hearts, softening them, making them new, so that we might love as you love. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's hear our first hymn as we join together. Come, people of the risen King.
I really struggled with uh, what to do today in our service, what to choose as a reading and what to choose as a theme, whether to make it a special service, marking us doing something together, or whether to begin the planned series on Philippians, which have been toying with over the Christmas period. In the end, I decided not to try and control things, but just, just to let things unfold. And I went to the lectionary, to the reading for this Sunday in John's Gospel. We find it right at the beginning of John's Gospel, where after Jesus meets Andrew, who runs to tell his brother Simon, Jesus meets Philip, who's so excited that he too runs to tell his nearest and dearest and invites him too to come and see, to journey together with Jesus as disciples and literally have their eyes opened to what God is doing in their midst. Think of a time when you've been so excited to meet someone that you couldn't wait to tell other people about it. If there's someone beside you just now, then why not tell them about it? Or if you're on your own and watching on Facebook, then you could write it in the comments underneath the video and share with one another but go on chat to the people if there's somebody there in the room with you chat to them and tell them what that experience was like who it was that you met and why you just had to share them with other people Let's hear our reading, read for us by Diane. Our reading is from John chapter 1, reading from verse 43. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathaniel asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, he said of him, Here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me? Nathaniel asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. He then added, I tell you the truth. You shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Amen, and may God add this blessing to this reading of his word. One of the first things that you notice here in this passage is how that those who experience Jesus can't wait to run off and tell someone else that they've met him. It's the same in the passage immediately before it, when Andrew meets Jesus and hears him and, and sees him for himself, just who Jesus is, and he rushes off to tell his brother Simon, whom Jesus then names Peter. And now in the passage that Diane has just read for us, Philip encounters Jesus. And whatever it is about Jesus, we don't know. Philip knows, is convinced that he's met the Messiah. And so Philip then rushes off to tell Nathaniel that he's met the Messiah and that this is the one that they've been waiting for. 
Nathaniel, though, reacts differently from Simon Peter in the first passage. Nathaniel is sceptical, even more so when Philip explains that this one whom they've met and is convinced as the Messiah is actually Jesus, the carpenter from Nazareth. And Nathaniel says, Nazareth? Never mind the fact that all good Jews knew that the scriptures all said that the Messiah would come from Bethlehem. But could anything good actually, you know, anything good even come from Nazareth? Philip doesn't stand there with him, no arguing or reasoning or, or bash Nathaniel for his doubts and his scepticism. No. Philip instead issues an invitation. Philip doesn't say, well, this is why I know he's the Messiah. Philip issues Nathaniel with an invitation. The same invitation which Jesus gave to Andrew and Philip themselves to come and see. See for yourself who this man is. Convinced that as soon as Nathaniel met him, he too would know who Jesus was, who Jesus really was. And so Nathaniel does. Nathaniel goes and sees. And by the end of that wee passage that we read today, Nathaniel has moved from a place of disbelief and a place of doubt, a place of scepticism, to a moment of clarity and belief. Transformation takes place. In the moment of seeing and of being seen, Nathaniel declares Jesus to be the Son of God, the King of Israel, code word, Messiah. So what happened? What happened in the in-between to move Nathaniel to that new way of thinking? Pure and simply, Nathaniel met Jesus. He encountered Jesus for himself, saw him with his own eyes and experienced being seen and known and most of all, accepted and loved. And isn't that all that any of us want? Isn't that all that any of us thirst for? To be accepted, to be seen and to be loved. I don't know if you've ever had the experience of meeting someone for the first time and after a short time or a brief exchange, felt that somehow, weirdly, they know you. You're an open book in their hands. You're laid bare before them and they get you. They understand you, maybe even in a way that you've never quite understood yourself. It's a marvel and it can be a moment of confusion as you wonder how they know you connected with you on that very personal level and understood that thing about you. And all within the space of a very, very short space of time. I don't think it's a moment you forget. I think it's one, I know it's one, which takes your breath away. It's also one that transforms you because it's a moment of being beheld, seen for who you are and being understood, being accepted and being loved. I wonder if that's what happened in that moment for Nathaniel. I'd love to be a wee fly on the wall and to hear the exchange between Nathaniel and Jesus and understand what it was that Jesus said or did that transformed life for Nathaniel. Nathaniel encountered Jesus for himself. That encounter changed him.
transformed him. Can we see that about our lives? Have we stood in Jesus' gaze? Have we sensed those deep, soul-searching eyes, neither drilling nor boring into us, but rather beholding us, drinking in all that there is to know about us, our deepest longings, our unfulfilled desires, our regrets, our hearts, our disappointments, but also our joys and our accomplishments. Have we had that sense of being held in Jesus' gaze and knowing that we are in the company of the King, in the presence of love itself? If you've known that, what did that experience do to you? Imagine now standing in Jesus' gaze. Do you shrink away in shame, hiding from those eyes? Or are you basking in the glow as your heart is warmed and transformed within you? As gratitude wells up and spills forth from your lips and the confessions form with question, with wonder and with faith. Lord, the thing is though, it can't stop there. It's not meant to stop there. Faith isn't meant to just be a personal thing. It's not about just our own personal transformation. It's a shared thing. It's a thing we do in community. It's here in the reading. As each who encounters Jesus runs to find someone to share that news with. It's people's experience to meeting Jesus, not just in this passage of our Bibles, but all of the way through our Gospels. As people are so excited by the transformation within them in meeting Jesus that they rush to tell another. It's the story of the leper who is made clean. It's the story of the blind man giving, given sight. It's the story of the woman whose son is restored to life. It's the story of the woman at the well. The list goes on. Time after time, they rush off to share the excitement and the news that Jesus has transformed life for them. And it can be our experience too. When I, so moved by my experience of encountering Christ, love my neighbour enough to share the good news of my transformation with them and invite them to come and see. Come and see this one who changed my life. Not tell them about why they need to, but just invite them to come. After all, one of the ways that God finds people is through God's people. What, what transformation might take place in this town if together we witness to what Jesus is doing in our midst? If we rush to tell our brother, our sister, our neighbour, our child, our friend, our enemy about the one that we've met and who's changed our life. But not just tell them about them, invite them to come and see for themselves, to meet Jesus themselves and to experience that transformation. This week I read a lovely story about a woman meeting Mother Teresa for the first time. The woman was wealthy and she took out her checkbook and said, how can I help you in your work? Mother Teresa pressed her checkbook, the woman's checkbook, back into her bag and, and took her by the hand, issuing that same invitation which Jesus had. Come and see, she said, as she led the woman into a tiny hut with a small hungry child and said, care for her. God is already at work in this town and God invites us 
to get involved, to open our eyes and to see where God is at work, to join him in it, to journey with God and be witnesses to all that Jesus is doing in our midst, sharing our stories, stories of transformation, stories of life, stories of hope, so that together we might encourage one another to invite others to come and see. There is much in our community, in our faith traditions that divide us. We come from different places, with different stories, with different histories. But I pray that these stories of what God in Christ is doing in our midst can unite us so that together we might journey forward, encouraging one another and inviting others to journey with us, to come and see, come and see God and be transformed by God. Come and see Jesus and know what it is to be seen by love itself. My Jesus, my Saviour, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, God, our Heavenly Father, has promised through his Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Let us pray. Ever-present God, in this time of crisis for us, our families, 
our communities and our changing world around us. We approach you in faith and with hope. We ask that you will be with us in our isolation and close to us in our distancing. Help us to take the invitation to come and see, not just ourselves in all our weaknesses, but also see you and your power. Great Physician, we pray for all those many people who are sick or unwell, whether in body or in mind, at home or in hospital. In your compassion, grant them access to all they need for support and to gain back their strength and be healed. We pray for the many different frontline workers, especially for all the medical staffs, facing daily risks as they attend to the sick, the medical researchers developing vaccines and learning more about this virus, and the many voluntary helpers and agencies. May they all find the strength and the energy to continue their selfless, valuable work. Saviour God, we pray for our communities, both local, national and international. The anxious, the lonely, the vulnerable, those who are in financial difficulties, now with children at home, increasing their needs. May they experience your loving presence through the works of those who support and assist them. Help us to do what you would want us to do, using our talents and skills and donations to help meet these needs. Supreme God, we pray for the churches here and worldwide, trying to adapt to this strange and confusing time. Unite us and ins inspire us to continue to create ways to proclaim your message of your unchanging love. We pray for all ministers, lay and ordained, the chaplains, the elders, the volunteers, who have all continued by many different means to make connections and provide praise, worship and pastoral care. God of peace and justice and love, we pray for the leaders of nations and governments around the world, those who have had to face difficult daily decisions that affect millions of lives. For those nations already ravaged by poverty, war, violence, riot and persecution and are now further broken by the pandemic. We have seen it all on our TV screens. We see the lack of health care and resources to provide basic food and shelter. Grant all those in authority the wisdom and the motivation driven by your love to work for peace and tackle the problems and, dis and lessen their suffering. Eternal God, we pray for all those who mourn and grieve at this time. Help them to find comfort, surround them with your love to ease the pain for their families and friends. Help us and them to know the sure and certain hope of the life everlasting. Lord, hear our prayers, for you are the God of our salvation. This we ask through your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's been such a joy to share together in worship this morning and I hope that it's blessed you too. It's been enhanced and um, added to by, by others being involved and I want to thank Diane for her reading this morning and I want to thank Christine for her prayer. Uh, both of those really helped us to engage uh, more with God 
And I also want to thank St Andrew's Praise Band. So a huge thanks to Keith and the others for, for leading us in our singing and in our praise. That's just been such a blessing today and it's really enhanced our time together. So thank you, all of you, for that. All that's left for me to say now is that I wish you peace. I wish you blessing. As you go from this time and from this space, I pray that you will know that you are journeying with Jesus. I pray that you hear his invitation to come and see and that as you journey, your eyes might be opened in ways that you never expected and that your hand might reach out to another and invite them too to come and see. And as you go, I pray the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit might rest upon you, might remain with you and might bless your step wherever you go. Amen. This is a holy place How can I be here? How can I show my face? For what do I deserve? No more than judgment and disgrace How can I enter your presence lightly? Forgetting all you've done, forgetting all you've done. Let me remember your sacrifice and the price at which this freedom is won. I am a sinner, yeah. How deep I wounded, how shallow my regret And though I don't deserve Your blood has cancelled out my death I will not enter your presence lightly Forgetting all you've done Forgetting all you've done Lord, I remember your sacrifice And the price at which this freedom is won Sanctify me and break this heart of sin And let my life become A place that Christ might enter in. I will not enter your presence lightly Forgetting all you've done Great Father, Spirit, Son I will remember your sacrifice And the love with which my freedom is won I will not enter your presence lightly Forgetting all you've done Great Father, Spirit, Son I will remember your sacrifice and the love with which my freedom is won and the love with which my freedom